Welcome to the Oracle Retail Guide to Documentation Series. This tutorial features the User Guide Overview for Retail Demand Forecasting and the RDF Cloud Service. Today's RDF Cloud Service documentation topics include New Item Handling, Historical Demand, Forecasting Core Process, which includes confidence intervals and data pooling, Best Forecast Method Selection, and Exception Management, also known as Alerts. Let's get started by clicking the Retail Demand Forecasting Cloud Service link on the Oracle Retail Documentation homepage. The documentation is organized by release. Each area has base releases and then patch releases. Cloud Service is listed on the top. The on-premise Retail Demand Forecasting application follows. We are focusing on the RDF Cloud Service 16.0 release and specifically the most common questions asked of our team of developers by you, our customers. We hope to show you where to access answers so that you can use our documentation to its fullest potential. The user guide provides valuable information and can answer many of the common questions our team has asked. We will start with our first topic, new item handling. Retailers are faced with how to handle new items in the store almost every week. These items need to be replenished so they require a forecast. However, without sales, there is no forecast for that new item. RDF has several ways of generating forecasts for these new items that do not have historical sales. To find some answers, let's go look at the user guide to learn more about substitute methods. They include methods that involve copying sales and copying forecasts. These methods require a like item in order to be forecasted by RDF, and assigning like items is a manual, time-consuming, and potentially inaccurate process. Another option which does not require a like item is base rate of sales. To learn more about base rate of sales, let's go to the new item basic parameters view. The final substitute method in this table provides a better way of creating a forecast. If a base rate of sales can be calculated or interfaced for the new items, RDF will automatically take this information and use it to generate a robust forecast that includes trends and seasonality. This process is automatic. Pre-processing corrects historical data prior to forecast generation when history does not represent general demand patterns. The result is a more accurate representation of the historical demand which is what would have sold under ideal conditions. A common question is, when I pre-process the history, I have several options. What methods should I use and for what purpose? The user guide provides a great starting point to fully understand the concepts necessary to accomplish historical demand preparation. The Historical Demand Preparation module contains the reference links to the workbooks you will use. As you can see, by clicking a link, you are immediately transported to the pre-processing administration task. It describes common uses and when it runs and why. For the cloud service workflow, you can learn that it is most often implemented in batch. You still control the measure, algorithm, and number of periods. Next, we can go view the details around the pre-processing methods. Here you can see that the appendix is a valuable source to help you understand which pre-processing methods to use and when. Some commonly used methods include lost sales standard exponential smoothing and why it is so commonly used. By clicking on the link you are taken immediately to this topic. Here you can see that lost sales standard exponential smoothing will correct the periods that are indicated by you as being out of stock. It is generally used to process long time ranges. Another commonly used method is standard exponential smoothing. The two main uses include the removal of spikes such as water sales before a big storm. In addition, an item can be heavily promoted one year and you want to get a baseline picture of that item so you can remove all the promotional lifts for that item to get a better representation of baseline demand for that year. Finally, we will learn about the standard median. Some items can be considered noisy. Standard Median can process that choppy line into a smooth line for our customers who prefer their forecasts to have a smoother look. We continue with a discussion on confidence intervals. The user guide contains the RDF Cloud Service statistical forecasting processes. Specifically, we can look at the information for time series or statistical forecasting methods. Included is the importance of confidence intervals, the time series methods used to generate forecasts, and how the best forecasting method is selected from a list of candidate models. What are confidence intervals? Confidence intervals are a measure of how much confidence you have in a generated forecast. We look at the standard deviation of the historical demand. For example, in a flat historical demand, you can be more confident that what you are generating will occur in the upcoming selling season for that item. 
If the historical demand for an item that sells a lot some weeks and other weeks little to none, your confidence will be less for that generated forecast based on that item's pattern for historical demand. Low confidence in the forecast is translated into high confidence intervals. These confidence intervals may affect replenishment. If too high, you may build up too much inventory during the selling season, for example. To deal with this, we offer several ways to control the magnitude of the confidence intervals. You can learn more by reading the information about the forecast administration task in the guide. It provides you the necessary information to help control these confidence intervals. The forecast administration module also includes information about the final level parameters view advanced settings. It also contains valuable information about the interval cap lower and upper ratios. Our next topic deals with data pooling. It was introduced in version 15. It allows the estimation of causal events at an aggregate level. In the guide, you can learn about causal parameter settings and more specifically, the next run date topic. In addition, the causal run mode section provides additional valuable information. Because you are at this aggregate level, you will benefit from a large pool of data. In this case, a best practice suggestion is not to run the causal estimation very often. For instance, the estimation generation task would run monthly rather than weekly. We continue with our next topic, how do we select the best forecasting method? You have some choices on how to proceed. You can either select a specific forecasting method from a list of available choices, or you can choose automatic exponential smoothing. AutoES runs a battery of methods and they compete to produce a winner. That winner is selected by balancing the forecast error against the complexity of the method that was used to produce that forecast. To see this exact formula, look in our guide and learn more about the Bayesian Information Criterion. You will also see how the AutoES flowchart helps you to understand the AutoES process. We continue this documentation tutorial with the next topic, Exception Management, also known as Alerts. RDF produces a lot of forecast data. This data needs to be approved before it is sent to downstream systems. Reviewing it is impossible due to the magnitude of the data set. RDF uses business rules implemented as alerts that will filter out the values that need to be reviewed. The user guide lists the alerts to assist you with your daily forecasting tasks. Let's explore a few of these alerts. We start with the forecast versus recent sales alert. This alert compares the level of the recent sales and the level of the forecast. One would expect them to be similar, but if not, this alert notifies you the discrepancy that needs attention. Next is the current forecast versus last approved forecast alert. This alert compares previous forecasts to the most recently generated forecast. One would expect these forecasts to be similar from week to week. If not, this alert notifies you that the item forecasts need attention. We continue with the forecast versus last year's sales alert. The most reliable forecasts are generated from data that has a repeatable pattern year over year. However, this is not always the case. A change in business strategy, merchandise reclassifications, and new items can all lead to changing selling patterns over time. To detect possible changes in selling patterns, the following alert will compare the last year's sales volume with the forecasted sales volume. If they are different by an adjustable percent, the alert is triggered. The last alert features the causal peaks alert. Retailers use promotions to drive demand. This is a complex process to determine the impact. Sometimes the forecast can come in on the high side. This alert catches those peaks in the forecast and lets you, the user, review those peaks in order to prepare replenishment for that promotion. Our last best practices suggestion deals with promotional forecasting. Our solution specialists recommend running the causal forecasting at the week level versus the day level. If the causal forecast is needed at the day level, set the causal calculation intersection to the week level and the solution will automatically spread the weekly forecast to the day's level. For more information, see the user guide to learn more about causal forecasting at the daily level. Here you can even see how the daily causal forecast process executes. This concludes the RDF Cloud Service Documentation Tutorial. Stay tuned for more tutorials from the Oracle Retail Global Business Unit Documentation Team.